Challenge. Your commentators, ABC Sports' Warren Boland and Tom Rodonikus. Hello everyone, great to be with you again for the Brisbane season and what a match-up we have for the pre-season final. It's a replay of last year's grand final when West defeated East. A number of changes in both teams since then, but Tom, there should be plenty of feeling. My word, uh, East and West, look, they're the heavyweight teams in this competition. The inclusion of uh, Ian Staines in uh, East front row, he's going to add a lot of starch to their forward pack. Adrian Lamb at 5'8 for West, well look, that's a bonus. This is going to be a great game of football and I'm sure there's going to be no hold barred. And here come the Eastern Suburbs Tigers. They're in enemy territory here at Pertell Park. Plenty to play for today. The fullback is Paul Mulverhill. On the wing, Andrew McGowan. The setup pairing, Greg Street and Steve Wilkes. Robert Cannon on the other wing. Peter Sinclair is the 5'8". Shane Cairns, the halfback. And the forward lineup: Steve Dowden at lock forward. In the second row, it's Scott Nielsen and Peter Elmore. The front row, Shane Pearce, Andrew Neve, and Ian Staines. The Panthers already on the field because it's pretty warm here at Pertell Park. The fullback is Craig Green. Mark Maguire on one wing. Sam Smith and Graham Strutt in the centre pair. Jared Kerr on the other wing. Adrian Lamb is the 5'8". Gavin Duncan, the halfback. At lock forward, Paul Tanks, back from injury last season. Steel Retchless and Steve Mills in the second row. Paul Schuller, John Little and Robert Campbell, the front rowers. And the thunderstorm above our heads, ready to break any moment. Light rain coming down, but I think it could get heavier in just a minute or so. The referee is Ian Irwin. And both teams ready and raring to go. $10,000 prize money on the line in this pre-season final. The Commonwealth Bank Challenge Final and bringing it back for Wests is Bob Campbell, the former Norths forward who's transferred clubs. Now Steve Mills, the big, strong, tall second rower, pounds his way midway between the quarter and halfway. Wests have got this advantage of um, a small uh, north northly breeze and I'm sure that they're going to use this uh, the kicks here and we see Gavin Duncan just doing that at the moment. The very reliable kicker in general play, Gavin Duncan. Paul Mulverhill took it well back on his own 20-metre line. And in fact, uh, looking at the markings, of course, with the 10-metre markings on the field, way back down on their own 20-metre now, so in their own fifth, fifth of the field, if you like, East. They bring it forward, try to clear away from that danger zone. In a dummy half is Andrew Knee. He looks outside and finds Ian Staines who captained East Premiership winning side in 1991. Now linking down the blind side, Steve Dowden. In fact, that's Scott Nielsen, who's moved into the second row for this match. Back it goes to Mulverhill. He's under plenty of pressure too. Coming through hard with Steel Retchless, and that's a good kick by Mulverhill. Finds touch 20 metres out. In fact, uh, 19 metres out from the Western uh, Suburbs line. And Tom... These very warm conditions certainly are going to test the players. Very humid. Yeah, my word. Very, very hot here. But I think this rain and the uh, overcast conditions now will cool it down a little bit. And, uh, and I think the players, you know, they'll be really thank thankful. So Duncan puts the ball into the scrum, screwing around. Plenty of weight there from East. But the penalty goes to West. And against East for collapsing, and certainly on the ground, was the hooker, Andrew Neve. That was great weight in that scrum, Tom. Well, look, actually, that's a really good push there by East. But as you can see, they're, they're turning the scrum around and they just can't hold their, uh, their front row up. And, and what happens, the scrum does collapse. A little tap to be taken. And Campbell goes over the halfway line with a good, strong burst. The defence hadn't really moved to him. He was very quickly over the advantage line. Now Paul Tanks, who missed much of last season after an operation on his spleen. They switch it quickly to the blind side. Schuller getting it away to Mills and down the wing goes Jared Kerr. He beats one tackle. He looked like he was into touch. The linesman has his flag in the air. Ian Irwin is continuing with the play. But now he looks back and sees that the touch judge has his flag in the air. None of the players nor the referee had realised, but still, uh, the winger, Jared Kerr, just put a foot into touch before he released the pass. He realised he was in trouble. Well, this is good football by West here. They're playing the edges very, very well. And the ball gets to Kerr, who just puts his foot out. And uh, But like I said before, good football. And no doubt 
in the touch judge's mind as Steve Mills backing up very nicely to score what would have been the first points of the match. Now Shane Cairns coming away, the East halfback. Only 15 metres out from their own line. So early on we've seen good ball movement and good organisation from West. A good strong run now by Peter Elmore for the Tigers. Well, there's some top defence here from both sides and we haven't seen one drop ball so far in this first half. Good football. Shane Pearce takes it forward. Slow play the ball and now Neve tries to kick from dummy half. It was charged down by Campbell. Rebounds and Duncan has it for West. Well, there's good football there by Campbell. Uh, he's a front rower and still he charged that football down and gives West six more tackles. Graham Strutton to play it. John Little in the dummy half for West's hooker. Getting it away to Campbell, who's working hard early in this game. Dummy to the outside, and in the end, pass across to Schuller went forward. Well, Little getting into dummy half, dummy to the open side, just to try and draw the defence in that direction, but by the time he came back to the other side, the pass slipped a little forward. Well, that's bad football there. Uh, Paul Schuller, he actually overran the football. He should have been deeper running onto that ball. West ball. Craig Green up in the line. The pre-season final ladder stood at Souths on top, followed by Wests and Easts. Valleys in fourth place. And out of the top four, in order, were Redcliffe, Ipswich, Brothers, Wynnum, Norths and Logan City. Then in the semi-finals, West defeated Valleys 38 to 12. And East defeated Souths 18 to 14. A match-winning try was disputed. They've got six more tackles here, West, as trying to cut inside there as Adrian Lamb found a little bit of space a good tackle knocked him over they're only 15 metres out Campbell thunders towards the post had his right arm free but there was no support that would have been very nearly a try laid on by Campbell if he'd had the backup Duncan goes wide Paul Tank standing out there in the back line also Steve Mills he was standing very very wide then but he was far too flat he has to be deep to run onto this football a chance now for Strutton as he steps back inside. Beautiful footwork by Graham Strutton, and that's a great try. Well, they switch play to the left west, and they brought it back to the right. Duncan in there to organise the play. He moved it out wide. Adrian Lamb involved as well. But finally, it was the fine stepping of Graham Strutton. Once he had a little bit of room to move, he turned them inside out. West from one side of the field to the other. Duncan gets it wide. Adrian Lamb throws a beautiful ball, cutting out his inside centre, found Strutton, who stepped inside one, left Mulverhill grabbing it thin air with a lovely right foot step. That's excellent work by Strutton to score the first try of the game. Yeah, good passing along the west back line here. Look at this pass from Adrian Lamb, cuts out a player, gets the ball to Strutton, and look at Peter Elmore and also Andrew McGowan. They were just, they diversity fell on the ground. Jared Kerr. Prolific point scorer for Valleys last season. Having switched to West to attempt the conversion right in front. Drives it low, but over the top of the black dot. That's the two points. And West with a good start, leading by six points to nil. Mulderhill gets play underway once more. Tom, that was a reward for West for some very constructive play over the previous sets of six. Well, what West are doing, right, they're taking the ball to different parts of the paddock and they're, and they're playing a great V formation, which means they can attack either to the left-hand side of the field or to the right-hand side of the field. They're, they're standing nice and deep and, uh, and it pays dividends. Danger signs here for East Defence, which is opening up. First it was Little, then it was Ratchless, and already West up over the halfway line. Now Mills is stopped. He needs to need to tighten up their defence. Maybe a little rattled by the onslaught from West early on. They've had plenty of ball, the Panthers, and they've been using it very well. Retchless, another former Valleys player. So Kerr and Retchless both, both transferring to West. Duncan puts it up high. Pressure here on Mulverhill. Takes it well. Duncan, the kicker, chases through on him. Mulverhill kept his eye on the ball. That was a good kick there by Gavin Duncan, but he didn't have enough chases to push uh, to put Marble Hill under pressure. It was a waste of time, the kick. Staines with a good hit up. 25 metres out now from his own line. Having a go, Shane Pearce. Cairns, the halfback, finds a runner outside him. Peter Elmore. But the West defence doesn't really look like cracking. Our last tackle here is Mulverhill's kick. Shoots for the touchline. Kerr had dropped back. 
with the ball bouncing straight over the sideline and uh, Jared Kerr could only watch it go past. A fairly solid set of six for East. They get it at least out of their half, but it'll be a scrum feed to West. Scrum fed by Duncan. With that change in the loose lineup, Adam Wanless coming into the second row with Scott Nielsen in the blood bin. But I don't think it'll be too long before Nielsen returns. Nothing too serious. West swinger Jared Card, he's looking for plenty of work. He's getting off his wing and he's taking that ball up for the forwards. He's letting them have a breather. That's good work, Jared Kerr. Schiller to play it. I work it to the wide blind side, to the far side. Paul Tanks trying to worry his way through. Duncan now on the open side with a back line. Mills is the big decoy. That's good defence from Andrew Neve. The hooker standing out in the back line in defence. He moved up and targeted the fullback Craig Green. Now Duncan with the kick. He doesn't muck around. He gets his kick in quickly. Back goes Mulverhill. Surrounded by the defence and struck him with the tackle. Andrew McGowan goes into dummy half, but he went the wrong way. It was well read by Sam Smith. Dowden. Plays it back quickly. Good quick play the ball. Pierce to play it. They're switching it both left and right, but more good defence. That time it was Elmore wrapped up, but West conceding the penalty. Just holding onto the boot, not releasing him once the tackle was completed. And the kick takes play just inside the West's half. Ian Stain straight and hard. Scott Nielsen back on the field. Only off for a couple of minutes. Dunless goes back to the bench. Shane Pierce, the two front rowers doing the work for the Tigers. They're only 30 metres out now. The run around. Neve gets it back again. He finds Elmore running straight and hard, but the defence was fine down low from Steel Retchless. Peter Sinclair trying to find run as he fights his way out of the tackle. 20 metres out now. Still a couple of tackles to go. Nielsen quickly back into the fray. And he fights his way only 10 metres out now. So East with a big deep back line. Will they go to the air? It goes to Mulverhill. He puts it on the toe. Mills across and plucks it out of the air as it took the high bounce. Mulverhill really trying to do it all himself there. And he had a lot of runners outside ready to chase. It was a third... Well, it was the first time uh, East had a back line here and uh, they should have thrown the ball out, but what he does, he, uh, he, he, makes, he takes the wrong option there, he puts a little grubber cook kick through, he should have let the ball flow along the back line. Mind you, it was very well covered by West's Mills and had all, also had his fullback Craig Green back there as well. So West down on their own goal line where they haven't spent very much time. They've had 12 minutes of play, West leading six points to nil after a converted try by Graham Strutton. Back to Duncan on the last. He puts it high. Right back over the top of Andrew McGowan. And that's gone right down to the 20 metre line. A 70 metre kick. McGowan does well. Gets back up towards the halfway line. And interference in the play the ball by Bob Campbell. And he gives away the penalty. The referee saying that he was all over the top of the man trying to play the ball and didn't release him. Yeah, Rob Campbell there, that's silly football, like a beautiful kick there from uh, Gavin Duncan, put um, East back to their 25-yard line, and then he gives away a silly penalty and puts uh, East back on the attack. Penalties going East way, 2-1. They're back in a handy attacking position here. Here goes Pierce. Hit equally hard though, good tackle by Tanks. Now Staines, who played with the Gold Coast last season. Only 15 metres out, they switch it to the blind side, but there was a misunderstanding, and Elmore can't hang on to it, Strutton's got it, he looks for Kerr, Kerr puts it down. It's anyone's ball, knock-ons both ways. In fact, repeated knock-ons. Well, in fact, it's a penalty to East. Offside play by West, so a West player must have been Kerr knocking it down. The referee has ruled that there was offside play here. You think East can consider, consider themselves very lucky here. Now this is their best opportunity they, they've had to score a try. Now I think they're taking too many forward rucks up. They've got to use their back line. Shane Pearce gets within five metres. A well stretched back line now as Cairns shovels it on to Elmore. They lost a couple of metres that time. Neve dummies to switch it, goes up the middle with Staines. They're still hitting it through the forwards. 
Cairns. Cuts out Sinclair. He picks up Mulverhill. A fine tackle by Adrian Lamb. Still only 12 metres out. The pass goes astray from Greg Street. He was trying to pick up Nielsen, but then decided to go the other way and hit hard in the tackle. The ball popped out, and the chance goes astray for East as Mills brings it away. And Tom East with three sets of six hammering away at West, and they haven't come up with any points. Mate, I think they're playing the wrong tactics. They're, they're, they're taking three or four rucks in the forwards where they only should be taking one and using their back lines. They're intent on taking two rucks in and bringing another forward back down the blind side. Skidding them nowhere. Replacement for West with David Liddell on the field, wearing number 17. Bob Campbell being given a rest. Gavin Duncan kicks over the head of Mulverhill and it rolls all the way into the end goal. It might even go all the way. No, it holds up. And Mulverhill turns around to see four West's players in front of him. And Strutton makes the tackle. The West are using the right tactics. They're only having a couple of rucks when they're in their own half. And those good kicks by young uh, Gavin Duncan. And now Issa Versi right on their own try line where two seconds ago, they looked like scoring a try. Duncan times his kicks well, doesn't he? There's no wind out there, but he's getting a lot of ground. But one thing about East, they're not putting him under any pressure at all. Uh, he's got enough time to have a cup of tea out there. Well, they hit it up the blind side, but uh, there's no way through. Pierce to play it. Neve kicking from dummy half. Kurt takes it well, right on the chest. Heads towards centre field. Nielsen goes underneath him and uh, just flicked his leg as he went over the top of him, put him off balance. Green, quickly onto Sam Smith. He's driven sideways by Sinclair. Retchless, straight and hard. Duncan works it wide. Back on the angle is Mills. He's a tough man to contain. Strong and powerful and, and because of his height, he also can get the pass away. Plays it forward, wasn't marked, still going. Flicks it out the back. Now it's Green. Full back dancing in amongst the forwards and staying alive too. Tiring out the East defence. Last tackle coming up now. Lamb. Duncan. Did that pass go forward? Referee allows it to play on. It looked very doubtful from this position. Maguire puts it up. It comes across field. McGowan from the other wing. Gets across to the post and did well to fly higher than everybody else. And beats a tackle. Gets up to the quarter line. That's good work by the winger. Well, that's about the third time we've seen uh, these shoes their back line. And uh, they're on the attack here again. That's another good ball. Is the last tackle. And that's a big hit on Adam Wanless. Now, was it high? Paul Schuller trying to convince referee Ian Irwin that it was. It was a solid hit. And now David Liddell bleeding from the eye as well. Adam Wanless, he has lost some blood. Maybe it's Wanless's blood that's on Liddell. Now, was it high? The initial impact was on the shoulder, but then he seemed to slip up and collide with his head. Paul Mulverhill to attempt the penalty. Believe that it was for inside the five, the penalty, and both Adam Wanless and David Liddell have left the field with very bad head cuts. And we won't see them back on the field, I wouldn't think. Very nasty incident. But Mulverhill to shoot for East first points of the game. 28 metres out. Close to centre field. Hits it well. And first points on the, on the board for the Tigers. But West still lead by six points to two. Warren, just going back to that penalty by uh, Ian Irwin. I was talking to him before the match. Now, why that penalty was was given, and I'll just explain it to the viewers, the uh, the West player's arm come off, hit the um, Eastern Suburbs player, and went to the head area of his body. Now, even if it hits your body, it goes to the head, it either warrants a penalty or a send-off. Now, uh, that's the rules given to the referee about these head-high head tackles. They've got to crack down on them, and, and uh, so he didn't think it would warrant a send-off, so uh, that's why the penalty was given. And fair enough decision, too. Sinclair turning it away, but uh, just short of halfway, played by Cairns. Now Mulver Hill is starting to retaliate pretty well to the kicking game of Gavin Duncan, and he drives West back towards their own line. Maguire can't get away from the chase. Good work by the setter down there, Steve Wilkes, who's in the team for Sean Davis, who's out injured with a back problem. Just positions in A grade on the line at this stage of the season. Everyone's still jockeying to get into that A grade lineup. 
And another replacement on the field for West, but it'll be a penalty as a high tackle went flying right over the top of Tat Whaleboat. So referee Ian Irwin calls over Scott Nielsen and tells him to keep them down. And that certainly was a high tackle from Nielsen. I mean, Whaleboat did duck slightly, but there was no way that Nielsen wasn't going to collect pretty high on the body of Whaleboat and fairly close to his chin, I would think. Well, uh, Tat Whaleboat's not, not a little fella either. He's, uh, what, about six foot tall, isn't he, Warren? All of it. Here goes Campbell. He's back on the field. It's hard to keep up with the changes. Wretchless to play it. Schuller. Paul Schuller, who polled well in last year's Rothmans medal, came in sixth. Whale boat making his presence felt, but he led with the raised elbow there. The raised forearm, I think, will be the call for me and Irwin. And he is going to be cautioned. There it was, the big forearm leading into the face of 5'8 Peter Sinclair. Despite West looking like the superior team for much of this first half, they only lead by four points after 30 minutes of play. And he's starting to get a roll on here. They've got the good B formation now and the little half back here. But oh, the ball nearly intercepted there by Sam Smith. Smith puts it down, so it's six more tackles to East. On the blind side, they move it through Cairns to Cannon. Only 12 metres out. West defence hasn't cracked very often as Nielsen places it back. Cairns, Sinclair, Dowden looms up in support and running hard off him was Greg Street. Didn't get the pass. Couldn't get the pass. Now Sinclair cuts back into Neve. He tries to break free, get his arms free. Last tackle going from Dummy Harper's Crosby. He's over the line and that's a try to East. Quick thinking by Bruce Crosby who shot out of the dummy half position got the advantage of a quick play the ball and West really hadn't moved off their line they didn't have time to quick thinking by the experienced Crosby and the help certainly came from a quick play the ball here by Andrew Neve. Crosby shot away and Whale Boat and also Paul Tanks really just didn't get off their line Bruce Crosby, he's definitely the best dummy half runner in Brisbane Rugby League and every time he gets the ball from the dummy half position it spells danger Mulverhill to attempt the conversion right in front and he can put East in the lead with this kick. The scores levelled at six all. And he could throw this over. Come Taking on. plenty of time over it. You can hear the shout from the crowd, come on. But he makes no mistake once he gets on with it. Looks at back at the mound as if to think he didn't hit it all that well. But East take the lead by eight points to six. Great individual try here, as we said before. But look at little Crosby. He takes the two West players over the line with him. He's got a lot of strength and a very cunning player. I was just saying that West hadn't extended their lead to match what had been their dominance for much of the first half, and now they're behind on the scoreboard. Well, I think that one of the reasons that East have sort of got back into this game is because they've got their kick and chase game together. The fullback, Paul Mulverhill, he's putting the ball right down actually in the, into the right-hand corner. There's a mistake though by East as Pierce puts it down and coming away with it is Paul Tanks. So a mistake that East didn't need just as they're starting to get a bit of momentum. Whaleboat chopped down in a beautiful tackle by Nielsen. Hit him right around the calf muscles and knocked his legs out from under him. Campbell leaving the field with a drooping shoulder. He looks to be in trouble. And well, a great recovery by David Liddell who left the field with that bad head cut he's on and there he is into the action but can't take the pass and i wonder whether he is 100 percent he's down again yeah, i think he's pretty quick big bandage wrapped around his head looks like uh, the invisible man he's on their own quarter line and liddell still being attended to as sinclair plays it back crosby from dummy half tanks may have been called offside by the referee so he didn't make the tackle have moved out too early from the marker position. We've only got uh, six minutes of this half to go and we're now into the danger period because you'll find six minutes to go in either half, that's when both sides, their defence seems to relax and that's when tries are scored. A kick from Mulver Hill. Now they're good kicks, right up near the try line. Kerr finally gets across to it. 
took a while to cover it, and by that stage, the chasers are well downfield. On goes Steve Mills. He's back on the field for West. Scrappy play now from the Panthers. Steve Dowden makes them pay with a solid ball and all tackle. Well, a few of the West players now, uh, they seem to be walk walking, but uh, Warren, this game's been played at a pretty uh, hectic pace, and, you know, with it being so muggy and hot, well, I think it's taken a lot out of these footballs. Oh, great ball from Shuller to Adrian Lamb. He comes to Mulvey. He'll wait for support. Steve Mills thunders downfield. Kerr backing up on the outside, but he was too far away. Great tackle by Cannon from the far wing. Quick play the ball. Kerr gives it to Lamb. He comes back to the blind side. Knows they've got the numbers. Out it comes from Mills to Sam Smith, but it's a forward pass. That was fine football by West and good thinking by Adrian Lamb to cut back to the blind side. But one of those passes had just slipped a little forward for the referee's liking. Oh, that one was okay. It must have been this one. Exceptional football by West. But what about before that, the uh, tackle of Robbie Cannon from the other wing saved a certain try. And the break by Paul Schuller, who went right up the middle. Beautiful pass. Oh, actually, in fact, it was Schuller who got the pass away. Yeah, to Lamb. To Lamb. And really, West could look at Sam Smith there and wonder why he overran Steve Mills because it wasn't Mills' ball in throwing that forward pass. Smith had just slightly overrun him. Well, I thought that should have been a penalty to West in that instance because uh, Gavin Duncan didn't even retire from that scrum. A dummy thrown by Little. He's only a couple of metres out. Just a few minutes before half-time, a chance for Wes Outer comes to Walbo, good hands on to Smith, he gets a second chance at the try and takes it this time. Great pass by Walbo, we're seeing some classy skills by Wes, and for that matter, East at times as well. Wes lead now by 10 points to 8. But they're hitting down this right-hand side, they've been finding the overlap, Schuller floated it over the top of Mills to Walbo, quick hands on to Smith, and he turned the defence inside out as he came off the touchline. Well, good football here by West and uh, big tat whale back. It's a beautiful ball there to uh, Sammy Smith, but he, he easily beats Paul Mulverhill, and I think Paul Mulverhill should have used that sideline. Kerr with a difficult shot at goal out wide. As East pay the penalty, they had a let off when West threw the forward pass, but then losing the scrum against the feed when Shane Cairns unable to pick it up and Gavin Duncan came up with it. Kerr with a wicked attempt at goal. And that went nowhere near. That's like one of your golf shots, Tom. Yeah. And West lead by 10 points to 8. Well, he should have had the penalty in the scrum before this try was scored because Gavin Duncan didn't, didn't retire at all. So instead of that try being scored, he should have been at least on the halfway attacking the West try line. Mulver Hill, who found himself with his hands full, trying to tackle Sam Smith close to the line just a moment ago. Mills brings it back. Steve Mills was involved in the action in the lead up to that try. Firstly as a ball runner and then secondly as a decoy. And the defence certainly is attracted to Mills. They know how dangerous he is. Cam Roper hits it up for West. Saying earlier that Schuller holds sixth in the Rothmans medal. Steve Mills finished second behind Jason Hanrahan from South who took last year's Rothmans medal. Well, Paul Schuller, he's got away some good balls here today. He just gets the arm loose and just lets those short little balls go. And another great kick from Gavin Duncan. It just touched the sideline before bouncing back into the field of play. And the scrum will pack only four or five metres out from the east line. There's a thorn in their side, Gavin Duncan. But here we see again, not one east player, although the little halfback, uh, Cairns, he did put him under a little pressure, but not enough pressure, and he just finds touch all the time. ball, Shane Cairns loses his footing. West came into this game with a few injury worries. Both teams having played on Wednesday night in the semi-finals. Paul Tanks carrying a corked muscle. Paul Schuller with possible broken bone in his hand. And John Little with an ankle worry, but they don't seem to be being hampered by those problems. Well, this first half, it actually reminds me a bit like the Coliseum because there's been a lot of blood spilt, Warren. It certainly has been. As Nielsen tried to get the one-arm pass away and West come up with it now. So just seconds remaining till half-time and Duncan goes for field goal from a long way out. It's a great-looking kick. 
That's a superb kick by Duncan. And his teammates applaud. Great thinking, knowing that the halftime siren wasn't far away and an equally good kick from quite some distance out, 35 metres or so out. The good thinking in a top little halfback. This is great thinking here by Duncan. Look, he, mate, he's a very, very smart halfback. 30 seconds or 20 seconds to go over the black dot. Well, Terry Lamb won a game in Sydney the other week with a 40-metre field goal, and Gavin Duncan's wasn't too much shorter than that, about 35 metres out. And at half time, West lead East by 11 points to 8. <laughs> Second half ready to go. And the play underway from the boot of Jared Kerr. And, well, after a very solid first half, these two teams. Interesting to see whether they can go the full 80 minutes because, as we've mentioned, conditions very warm and humid. And certainly the impact of the tackles has been felt. Some stinging defence in the first half. Mistake there by East as Peter Elmore went without it, but it went backwards. And we'll have a look at the stats from that first half. The scrums have gone to West 3-2, but two of those going to West against the feed. The penalties going East way 5-3. Overall errors, 14 by East to 10 by West. And tackles in possession. And West have had the ball for 84 tackles, East for 76. So possession fairly evenly shared. And East fighting their way back into the uh, game in the latter part of that first half. And Johnny Lang, the East coach, is with us. John, you've lost a couple of experienced players like Darren Wil Windmill, Steve Herman, Gavin Payne, but the return of Ian Staines must help the Tigers. Yeah, it should, Warren. I think he's going pretty strong out there today, too. Uh, John, um, mate, you've only used the uh, back line on a, on a number of occasions. Uh, any reason for that? And can we expect a little bit more from your back line in the second half? Well, Tommy, you know, I think the reason we haven't used our backs is the fact that our forwards haven't been going forward. You know, I thought our forwards have been very ordinary in the first half. And, uh, you know, if, they, if, they're not, uh, if they're not doing the job, um, well, you know, it's, it's very hard for your backs to get going. Yeah, very true, John. Thank you very much. We're seeing some adventurous play from West. Here's Graham Strutton went right down the right-hand touchline, threw the ball over his head and found support. And West on the attack. We'll let Johnny Lang get back to uh, coaching East with West only 10 metres out. Cam Roper burrows his way another couple of metres. Try here will really lift West. Good way to start the second half as Lamb steps inside one tackle. Street almost beaten, just managed to recover with help. And caught in amongst, amongst the traffic, and there's plenty of it from the East defence. Finally, Green plays it back. They swing it wide. Kerr throws it back. He got the pass away before he was tackled. But, uh, well, maybe the referee... I think he's found a knock-on in the end from Paul Tanks because it would have had to be a penalty if he ruled that it was passed after the tackle was completed and that was a handover on the last. Well, that was good defence there by Issa very early in the, in the uh, second half. Now, if West would have scored, then well, they were in all sorts of trouble. So East inside their own 20-metre line and it's Ian Staines. And Tom, while we were talking to uh, Johnny Lang, there was some fairly adventurous play by West down the far side, Graham Strutton in particular. Is Bruce Crosby with a good burst, and he finds support in his winger, Andrew McGowan. Sprinting down the touchline, he's got support looming up inside. Street takes the pass. Oh, great tackle from Green. Craig Green changed direction and made the tackle in a split instant. But he's still on the attack. Neve swings a long ball on the bounce. They tried to keep it on the toe, but still they go ahead. Good football by Wilkes now. Dowden backing up is held. Fifth tackle. 12 metres out. Mulverhill puts it high. It's going to come down in the in goal area. Green flies high. And now what's the call? The referee is going to go back to the 22. He said, well, what has he said? That it must have come off an East player. Well, this is a tricky one here. A real good kick by uh, Mulverhill. The ball goes very high in the air. And let's have a look here. No, the ball actually was taken for, uh, for a split second and the referee must have said, well, it was long enough, 25-yard tap. Well, the referee giving the benefit of that, the doubt there to 
Craig Green. He certainly flew high to take it. And I suppose you could say that it was pulled out in a way by the East player as he came down. Now here's Whaleboat in centre field. Duncan gets his kick in. West leading, 11 points to 8. Back goes McGowan. And plenty of defence down there. Good tackle from Strutton. And Strutton's around the ankles of Nielsen for another tackle. Crosby at dummy half. Staines. Dummies inside. The defence had moved up inside him. Cut off the pass. And the header came back on the outside. Elmore. Striving to break the tackle. Roper managed to stop him with little. Neve. Ten metres short of halfway. They've used up five tackles. Mulverhill. Kicks it out on the full. A wild kick. Put too much of the inside of his boot and hooked right out over the touchline. It mightn't look like it on your screen, but it's getting quite dark here at Pertell Park. A few big thunderclouds around, but still very little rain throughout the game. Whaleboat. And we'll be looking for any meetings between Tat Whaleboat and Scott Nielsen because Nielsen nearly took Whaleboat's head off in the first <laughs> half. And that dates back, we presume, to the 91 grand final where Whaleboat put uh, Nielsen out of the game. Nielsen was carried off on that occasion. He'd only come face to face once in the game and it was a ferocious, in this game, and it was a fairly ferocious meeting. Schuller pops a good pass. Back to Tanks. Flicks it up beautifully for Lamb. Lamb shows great speed. Gets it back to Little backing up. His arms are wrapped up. He still gets the pass away now. Good football. The West are prepared to throw this ball around. They've, they're letting it go left to right, turning the ball in and out, and good football. Schuller slips it to rope up, but he can't hang on to it. The pass shot out in front of him. He grabbed at it, couldn't pull it back in. Not really expecting it, and it was a little bit uh, away from him. And David Mills is on the field for West, the brother of Steve Mills. David Mills wearing 16. East ball. Uh, well, Shane Cairns has been busy. I don't know that he's won the war with Gavin Duncan. Here's Nielsen. I think at this stage of the game, uh, Gavin Duncan, he's having a brilliant game. He's picking the edges very, very well. And his kicking, kicking game, as usual, is excellent. Sinclair finds a little bit of space. Now Dowden cuts back into open spaces. Great work by Steve Dowden, but a fine tackle by David Mills. Came in and crunched him. They keep it going quickly, though. Street pulls out of one tackle. That was Mills getting across again. Good work to be there, even if he couldn't quite affect the tackle. Elmore holds it up for Cairns. He's knocked over on the last tackle. Well, that's good football there by East. They're starting to find a few little gaps now just on the edges of the ruck and just popping that pass inside, and now they're making good yardage. Cairns was squashed by Tat Whaleboat on that last. Big man on little man. Roper. Crosby's got him. Steve Mills. He stays alive for a long time. Very difficult to put on the ground. Little at dummy half. Duncan. Lamb. Inside to Whaleboat. Well, well on that occasion, uh, Tat Whaleboat was far too shallow. He gave Liam no chance and uh, he was virtually walking into that tackle when he received the ball. Duncan's kick. Drives Mulverhill back to his 20 metre line. So the tactical kicking of Duncan in particular, but also from Mulverhill, particularly in the first half, has been pretty effective. West leading 11 points to 8, scoring two tries to one in the first half. That, that score unchanged in the first 10 minutes of the second half. Shane Cairns has it, flings the pass out to Sinclair. He beats Strutton and he's off and running, Peter Sinclair. Just ankle tap from behind. Crosby wants to quick play the ball. 
keeps it going to Street. Heading towards the outside of his man, but Roper came in to meet him with Sam Smith. Crosby away on the blind side. He beats one tackle. Roper goes sailing through the air. Up to halfway now. Sinclair. Staines. Sinclair again. Cannon. Getting himself more involved, uh, Peter Sinclair. Uh, he's finding the gaps, especially off scrums, because they're very, very loose there. Um, offset scrums are west. Good defence by Mark Maguire to chase across to make two tackles in a row. Now it's Cairns stepping off his left foot. But lost his footing. Fifth tackle now. Neve stabs it in. And play which started at their own 20 metre line for East. Ends at West 20 metre line. Six tackles later. Greg Street sucking him in. Saw these players, well they must be pretty fit now. Not quite at 100% fitness. Gary Grenke, the West coach, looking on. Fed by Duncan. Scrum screwing around, but Duncan comes away with it on the blind side. Well, I think uh, for this time of the year, the football shown by both these sides has been excellent. The mistake rate has been kept down to a minimum, and if this is what we're going to expect for the rest of the year, well, mate, it's going to be brilliant. I've got to agree, Tom. For a, a pre-season game the standard has been very good and here's a fine strong run by Steele Retchless he really got over that advantage line quickly turned the defense around quick play to ball which has been a feature now it's Smith running off Lamb stays in the field to play well but that's the last tackle that Smith was twisting around trying to find support on the inside he knew that it was the last tackle there's no one to pass it to and he took the tackle Ian Staines, too, for, for Reese. he's uh, done his uh, share of work and uh, he had a year down with the Seagulls last year and uh, I'm sure that he's going to be a big bonus for Reese this season. Neve scoots out of dummy half, Schuller just oh. closes the gap, great pass goes on, Elmore was backing up, Cannon comes into the play, Steve Dowden was the man who backed up Neve. Now Crosby, he's getting very involved, Crosby. Mulverhill up there, street, taken ball and all. In the highish tackle by Graham Strutton, and he'll be penalised for going just that little bit too high. It really wasn't a vicious tackle, but the referee, as Tom said in the first half, cracking down on anything above the shoulders. Yeah, there was no uh, malicious or, you know, any, anything bad about that tackle, but that is the rule and uh, deserves a penalty. But East now have got the big opportunity here to score a try, and uh, that they have looked dangerous. Uh, Nielsen nearly goes all the way as they stood and waited for him, and Nielsen shovels his way another metre forward. Ken Sinclair, Elmore standing out wide. Gee, that was a great run by Scott Nielsen to get that close. West just stood and stared at him. Staines pops it up to no one, comes off a West player at six more. East with six tackles, only five metres out. A real opportunity here with West stretched. Mulverhill, Sinclair. Crosby went past him. Back it comes to Neve. Cairns grabbed by one arm by Duncan and Hill. Still plenty of tackles up their sleeve. Sinclair. Nielsen. He's held 12 metres out. Mulverhill has a go himself. Finds a little bit of a hole in behind to play the ball two metres out now. Plenty of talk out there from both teams. Cairns, Sinclair, flicks it over the top to Street. Street looks out wide, it's touched to West Ham. Crosby quickly onto Cannon for the line. Did he get it down? He was rolled over and he did place it down. Good football by Rob Cannon to finish it off with the cover defence converging and a great piece of attacking play by East including one very adventurous pass over the top. I think it was Peter Sinclair who took the odds to it here. Sinclair goes into the defence, just had his back turned, but threw it over the top, knowing there was plenty of support. And a good pass by Street onto Crosby, onto Cannon. The try in the corner. G got that down well in the tackle of David Mills. Well, West have, look, have looked very good in this uh, opening part of their first half. What about that pass from Peter Sinclair? Honestly, he could play for the Brisbane Bullets down at Boondall. But also, very well finished off by Rob Cannon. Made sure he got that ball safely onto the ground. His coach, Johnny Lang, impressed with that effort, which put his team in front by 12 points to 11. There's $10,000 for the winner of this Commonwealth Bank Challenge final. $5,000 for the runner-up. 
and Easts have got their heads in front. Mulver Hill trying to extend the lead with the lights coming on here at Pertell Park even though it's only four o'clock in the afternoon. Only a meter in from the touchline, a difficult one for Mulver Hill. He pushes it out to the right, but East have the lead, 12 points to 11. Well, East have really got this back line firing here. Actually, that was a low pass there to the half back up, Shane Cairns, but uh, they're just using their back line. The ball goes out well along there by uh, Greg Street and on to Crosby. He's been in, in, into everything this second half and uh, well finished off by Robbie Cannon. Neve. East looking for the try. A converted try would just about wrap it up from here. Crosby gets within four metres. Will they keep darting away? No, Neve sends it wide. Cairns. Sinclair loses it. We'll try and recover. And that's a knock on, but West will have the scrum feed. West uh, actually let off the hook there by uh, actually just just a bit of you know just lacking concentration there, young Sinclair and uh, there could have been a try on there. I think Sinclair thought that he would try and get the quick pass on, but forgot to catch the ball before he shoveled it onwards. As Nielsen is replaced by Elmore, who took a quick break in this pre-season final. The coaches have unlimited interchanges. It'll be more restricted in the first round of the Forex Cup next week. The real thing. First round of the Premiership next week on ABC Television, 6 o'clock, every Sunday. Schuller to play it back. Liddell has made a great comeback. Well, this is where, where Mills has really got to get himself more involved. Here we see him take that ball. Got to be a high tackle. Neve went in just around the neck. Again, not a vicious tackle, but he certainly wrapped it around. C coat hanging around the neck. Yeah, we see here Mills getting more involved in the, yeah, just around the shoulders and the neck area, which are, which are the rules. Wouldn't have hurt Mills for a moment, but as long as the referees are consistent, as long as they apply the rule to both teams and tackles stay down below the neck, you can't complain. Well, I just, I, I just hope we don't get to the situation in rugby league, Warren, where one player only tackles one player. I thought you were going to Shuller. say something a little worse than that. <laughs> Here's Schuller. Back on the inside. Liddell. Mills. Little. They're not knocking them over. Now it's Tanks. These aren't finishing off the tackles. West's allowed to stand and pass. And they've got their back line in position now, West. Roper. The pass from Duncan made it difficult for him. Gavin Duncan, to me, he's just lost a little bit of concentration there. He had a beautiful back line, nice and deep. And what's he do? He turns the ball into a player who wasn't ready for it. What's he do? Put it on the deck. Well, eight minutes to go now. This has been a worthy pre-season final. You don't expect two teams to be at their best in the pre-season, but these two clubs have played fine football well, here. Great now, run Crosby. By Crosby. Hasn't he made some ground, Bruce Crosby? Well, he scored one try there in the first half, and he's just opened them up on a number of occasions and has been involved at least two of their tries. And now he's coming to the sideline. He'll be replaced as the ball goes out wide from East, and it has been lost. Put down by Steve Wilkes. And Scott Nielsen's back onto the field. I think we've had about 25 interchanges by both teams in this game, but who can complain? Heat and injuries players just not quite able to run out the 80 minutes Duncan Lamb Green as well tackled by Wilkes and Street comes over the top it's a tough defense today Liddell these two teams came to play and they've really thrown everything at each other Duncan Mills Ball pops out of his hand. His arm was yes. not going to went up in the air, but they've got it back. Well, that went forward for Mills, didn't it? No, no. Good decision by the referee. It was hit. The ball was hit out by an East player, and uh, top decision. Now this this could be uh, West's last chance of putting points on the board. You may have been right. I thought that it still came from Mills' arm, which was jolted, but the referee saw it the same way as you, Tom. So West have it for another six, and they're inside East half. Schuller. 
The field goal could be worthwhile for West if they want to draw. No, I don't think they want to draw. I'd hate to see them go for a field goal because I think they're attacking well. We just see Cam Roper take it up to the 25-metre line. Well, where is Gavin Duncan? He's on the right. It goes to Lamb. They are running it on the last. Lamb goes into trouble. He's gets out of it, puts a kick ahead. He's a chase with Steve Mills. Mills got to it first. And that's a try to West. Great football, and they're jubilant because that could just about wrap this game up. It'll be hard for East to come back with only six minutes to go. But with Adrian Lamb taking it towards the post, he got in amongst the forwards. There was no way through, and then he put the little kick ahead, and big Steve Mills won the chase. And the boys on the hill love it. Gavin Duncan was on the right-hand side. Some of the defence might have been looking at him. Some elusive work here from... Lamb, who beat Nielsen amongst others, puts the kick in when he can't go any further. And then Steve Mills wins the race to the ball. Well, the East players here, they're looking at Adrian Lamb to kick this football. But some very ordinary defence there by Scott Nielsen. And look at that little grubber kick, right to perfection. And who should come along? Big Steve Mills. And I think he's uh, just scored the winning try. But he's had a very good game, Steve Mills. Uh, he's been a thorn in his side all game because Warren, when, when he runs out wide, he gets the ball, he takes the ball right to the middle of the field, gets him into an attacking position. Mark Maguire adds the two points, taking over the goal kicking from Jared Kerr. So West now, with four minutes to go, lead by 15 points to 12, or 17 points to 12 now with that conversion. So Maguire adding the extras from right in front. Referee calls time off. He's going to make sure that both teams get full use of this last few minutes of play. Yeah. West here, look, look at Adrian Lamb. He comes across here and Mills actually went to go inside him to run an angle and put himself into a perfect position for the grubber. Grubber, so isn't it funny how things work out? Steve Dowden trying to get back there to beat Mills to the ball. Couldn't quite make it. From the restart, David Mills brings the kick back. So East's down by five points. They're not beaten yet. A converter try can still win them the game. They have to get possession. Gavin Duncan, you would think, would be trying to boot it down the other end of the field. Will he wait till the last tackle? Yeah, I would. If, uh, if I was the, the West captain, I'd make sure that I'd take out the, the whole set of five tackles and make sure that the kick goes in the right place. Mills and Liddell working well together. Now Duncan goes for it. Didn't wait till the last as it turned out. And make sure he finds touch. Either way, as long as he could drive it deep towards the corner, he was going to put his team where they want to be, at the other end of the field. There's David Liddell with that big bandage around his head, who's fought on well in the second half. And West in no hurry to put this scrum down. They're quite happy to watch the clock go by. The scrums are locked at 7 all. The penalty's 7-4 to the Tigers. And there's another one, the scrum penalty against West not binding properly in the scrum by the look of it. Overall error is pretty even. 24 to East, 22 by West. And possession equally shared. 152 tackles in possession for East to West 148. So both teams have had their opportunities with the ball. My word, they had. One thing I'm very impressed with is the refereeing of Ian Irwin. He hasn't gone silly out there and blown the uh, pee out of the whistle. I think he's, he's, he's had a really good day, Ian Irwin. I've got to agree, but I think you've gone soft in the off-season. I can't believe you're saying it, Tom. You've never been a lover of referees. No, and I still don't, but you've got to give them a rap at different times, mate. It's only early on the year. <laughs> Here's Greg Street. Back into West Half. East have two minutes in which to pluck this pre-season final out of the air. One thing down by five points. Peter Elmore trying to keep this ball alive. Peter Elmore, he's a player who's really impressed me in this second half. He's been full of running and he's, he's done his share of work. Dowden loses the ball in the tackle and that might just about be it now. As West come up with it through Schuller, who has worked solidly all day. Mulver Hill should have been penalised. Struck at it early and now Mulver Hill has been knocked over by a West player. So there might be another chance here for East. Yeah, Touch judges in. Yeah, I think the, the player is uh, Paul Schuller. Just giving him a rap for working hard throughout. Initially, Mulverhill, I think he tried to strike for this ball in the, from the marker position too early. And then after the player had moved away, Mulverhill was knocked over. Yeah, you're just calling Paul, Sh Paul Schuller out there now. 
Schuller cautioned. So one last chance for Reese, and that's silly football by Schuller. If his team should lose this, he'll be to blame because they had possession west and now they're back on their own line and east have got it east need a converted try they're close to the line Staines plays it back out of comes from Duncan to Sinclair to Street Street sees a little hole gets the pass away to Wilkes Wilkes for the line the defense is there still have plenty of tackles up their sleeve though they want a quick play the ball West's all over them Torpy Sinclair throws it wide Cairns back inside Crosby's on the field Neve Good defence by Western Suburbs there. They're, they're throwing themselves into all tackles here. But West look a little bit short out wide. Street pops it for Kansas. Kansas over. Kansas scored the try. East still down by a point. It's all going to come down to the conversion. Great football by East. Well, that penalty may have turned the game. A silly penalty in the end given away. And East with the extra set of six. The full-time siren sounding as we look at the replay. Street holds it up beautifully for Shane Cairns and the little halfback finishes it off and brings East within a goal kick of victory. Yeah, look, uh, Greg Street here, he runs across field and Shane Cairns, look, he runs straight at that hole and, uh, and Paul Schuller, he just arrives a bit too late and uh, a very good try. So it's all up to Paul Mulverhill and it's not all that easy under this sort of pressure. 5,000 bucks riding on this kick from Mulverhill. His teammates should buy him a beer tonight if he can kick it. Has it placed about 14 metres in from touch. Both teams gathered in a huddle. East on the halfway line, West in the in goal. And Paul Mulverhill has victory in the pre-season final. And not in his hands, it all depends on his boot. A deep breath. How many times have goal kickers had to decide big games? Mulverhill hits it well, it's a good looking kick, it's there! Paul Mulverhill is ecstatic. He's done it. That's a pressure kick and his teammates quickly up there to surround him. And the adrenaline just pumping now through Paul Mulverhill's veins because he's done it. He's won this game, snatched victory after the full-time siren. I guess you can say that West can only blame themselves.